Adobe Photoshop on the web delivers core Photoshop capabilities in a reimagined web-based interface. To access the application, you don't need to download and install it. Simply point your web browser to photoshop.adobe.com. Here on the home screen, you can begin by dragging an image from your computer, browsing your local files, or simply creating a new document by clicking the New File button in the upper right-hand corner. For now, I'm just going to begin with an image that I have on my local computer by dragging and dropping it here. Now that we're in the app, let's take a look at some of the interface options. On the left, you'll notice the toolbar. Each icon indicates a tool category. When I click on the category, a second panel opens to the right, revealing all of the tools within. I can always collapse the panel to save some room by clicking on the arrows here. Now when I hover over each tool icon, a subset of tools opens up to the right. I'll go ahead and expand that again. Here towards the top, I have some document level controls like the name of the document. I can rename the document by clicking on it and then in the dropdown selecting Rename. To the right of the name is a browser zoom level control. I can select my zoom level in the dropdown here or zoom in and out using a scroll wheel on my mouse or pinch and spread on a trackpad. The panels here towards the right of the application can be toggled on or off by clicking on their respective icon. The first hides or shows the layers panel. Notice when I opened this image, the application automatically created my first layer. I'll go ahead and rename that layer by double clicking on it, assigning a new name, and then pressing return on the keyboard. Next, I can toggle on or off properties, then below that, any comments I might have made or received from my collaborators. I'll go ahead and stick with just the Layers panel open for now. One of the exciting aspects of Photoshop on the web is the way that it hides and shows powerful controls based on what it is that I'm doing in my workflow. I'll make some changes, and as I do so, I'll show you how the interface adapts. To begin with, I'd like to adjust the dimensions of the original image. In the Tools panel, in the Size and Position category, I'll select the Crop tool. When I hold down the Shift key while I resize, it retains the height to width ratio. I'd like to change that a bit, so without the Shift key held down, I'll go ahead and take away some of the content here towards the bottom. Once I'm happy with them, I can apply them by clicking the Done button. Next, I'd like to remove the background here and replace it with another image. And this is where the contextual taskbar comes in really handy. It keeps track of where I am in the application and dynamically changes to show me possible next steps in my process. When I click on Remove Background, Photoshop detects the subject of my image and automatically removes the background. Notice here in the Layers panel, Photoshop has created a layer mask alongside that image. From here, I can always fine tune the work if I'd like. It looks pretty good now, so let's go ahead and keep going. I have a nice New England shoreline that I'd like to use for my background. I'll just grab that from my local machine by clicking on the menu here in the upper left, then selecting Import. From here, I can browse to my file and select it. Once I place and resize it a bit, Photoshop will create a new layer with that image here in the Layers panel. I'd like to reorder it so that it sits behind my headshot, and for that, I'll go ahead and click and drag it down in the stack. I think it'll also help if I move my headshot off to the side a bit. So I'll make sure I have the headshot layer selected in the layers panel and the move tool selected in the tools panel. And I can now just click and drag it off to the side. Flipping my image might help this composition as well. And I can do that easily here in the contextual toolbar towards the bottom. I'll click on the layer properties and then select the flip icon here towards the right. To add a bit of depth to the background, I can apply a Gaussian blur. I'll make sure I have the background layer selected this time. Then here in the Tools area, I'll hover over the Adjust category and I'll select Gaussian Blur. I can now set the blur level that I'd like with this slider and then click on the Done button to commit the change. I like the composition now a lot, but my face seems to be much brighter than the background. So the last adjustment I'll make will be to correct for that. With the Headshot layer selected, here in the Just area of the Tool panel, I'll select Brightness and Contrast, and I'll go ahead and pull the brightness down a bit. I'd like to do one more thing, and that's add a headline to my promotion. I'll go ahead and select the Type tool here in the Tool panel, and then I'll press and drag to create a text container on the canvas. From here, I'll type out my headline, and with the text still selected, I'm going to experiment a little bit with my font, 
color, some spacing attributes, until things start to look the way I'd like them to. With that all set, I'll come into the Layers panel, and I'm going to click and drag to move the text layer between my photo and the background and make sure that that overall placement works. Now, best of all, all the changes I've made here are considered non-destructive. I can hide and show a layer, I can undo my changes, or refine any of them at any time. I can download my finished image to my computer by clicking the Download button. In any case, all of the work I've done here is automatically saved in Creative Cloud, and logging into my account from any computer will allow me to continue working with the file. Well, that concludes this roundup for Photoshop on the web. I encourage you to give it a try.